when you're young, it seems that you know everything. Uh, they may not admit to it or not, but much like yourselves, you know, and myself, the way that people act in high school and in college <clears throat> seems to be as if they know everything. You know, um, I remember being being in college, and people told me older than me. People they told me to to um, <clears throat> to to go to to know what I'm going to school for. I would just fail. You know, and I learned the hard way. I ended up failing some important classes because I didn't know what I was going to school for. I didn't think I needed to learn to listen to people who were older than me. I thought I would learn everything uh, just as I went on in life. That I would learn everything I needed to know. Uh, people also told me when I got a job to to go back to college. You know, to to go back to college because it'd be way better than the job I had. You know, and I didn't listen. In uh, I didn't listen to what people who were older than me thought. You know, I thought I knew everything. I thought that uh, no matter what they said, yeah, that it didn't matter. You know that I knew more that I was, you know, it was part of a different time. You know, and um, much like the way I thought, we're gonna look at a, we're gonna look at a book in the Bible where, uh, where uh, Solomon or someone older is is giving advice to those younger than him, maybe his sons, about how uh, about what is important to do in their life as he's learned nearing the end of his life. So, turn, open your Bible to Ecclesiastes 12, uh, starting in verse 1. Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them, before the sun and the light, and the moon and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men are bent, and the grinders cease, because they are few, and those who look through the windows are dimmed, and the doors on the street are shut, when the sound of the grinding is low, and one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of song, at the, at, of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high, and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along, and desire fails because man is going to his eternal home. And the mourners go about the streets before the silver cord is snapped, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. Besides being wise, the preacher also taught the people knowledge, weighing and studying and arranging many proverbs with great care. The preacher sought to find words to light, and brightly he wrote words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and like nails firmly fixed are the collected sayings. They are given by one shepherd. My son, beware of anything beyond these, of making many books there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commands, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. Alright, so starting in verses 1 through 8, Solomon or, or someone else, uh, sometimes the book of Ecclesiastes isn't, isn't attributed to Solomon, but it's most likely either indirectly or directly written by Solomon. So Solomon is saying in verses 1 through 8 that he's writing about a description uh, of you know just someone dying, of something dying, and most likely it is him. So there's some key phrases that, that point to that. So in verse 5 it says, uh, because man is going to his eternal home, and the mourners go about the streets. And then in verse 7 it says, And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. So um, in verse 7, you know, the dust returns to the earth, I think that's just a reminder, you know, of Genesis, Genesis 2, when God gave life to Adam, you know, when God breathed life and uh, breathed life to his bones. You know, it's just a reminder that he, he is the one who created, so he's taking life away. And um, and so I believe that this is just a description about you know a man dying and you know and Solomon and and uh, just through all these descriptions you know just about you know the strong men are bent the grinder cease you know the the grasshopper drags itself along desire fails you know desire failing you know that is also another sign of someone just dying coming close to the end you know, no more desire uh, it's just all this description of that but the main thing to remember this passage is in verse 1 where it says remember also your creator in the days of your youth so he's saying he's saying to re, he's telling them to remember remember your creator in the days of your youth remember your creator God 
You know, and this is important. He's telling them to remember him because he's the one who brought their people out of slavery, who brought them into the promised land, who gave them a king. You know, he, he did all these things for them. And um, he's telling them to remember that. Remember what he has done for you. Remember, remember your creator. You know, he's the one that, that created them. He's the one that gave them. He's the, only, he's the reason why they're living. You know, and um, to remember God. You know, to remember what he has done for them. And uh, this is also important in light of where, where we're at, you know, in the biblical story you know, and the fact that this is after exile, after the, the, after the God's people were sent to exile because of uh, Babylonian invasion. This is after that, you know, and they were in this time, they're waiting for their Messiah. Uh, and they're waiting for their Messiah to come, you know, and, and uh, they weren't seeing, you know, God act in crazy, miraculous ways. You know, they weren't seeing miracles happen day after day. Or, you know, God speaking to them as a burning bush or parting the Red Sea on a day, daily basis. You know, they, uh, they were they were living their lives, you know, just every day, going about it day to day. You know, just going with the flow, basically. Just, you know, going to work. You know, the sun was rising and the sun would set. You know, and that was it. You know, that was their lives. You know, they weren't not crazy, miraculous things. You know, when, they, when people think of the Old Testament, you know, they think that God acts in such different ways than God acts, acts in today or in um, the New Testament, you know, and God did act in different ways, you know, to different people, you know, in the Old Testament. But for the most part, and for the for the normal Israelite, the normal person, you know, that, that God is still the same as He is today, you know, and and God is the same. But uh, they weren't seeing these crazy, miraculous things happen, you know, and uh, it's very similar today because we're living in anticipation. We're living in test in te anticipation of. Christ's second coming, you know, we're waiting for that, you know, and much like today, I can imagine the people back then were beginning to give up on what they were anticipating on, they were beginning to think that their Messiah wasn't going to come, you know, and, uh, and that's what makes what Solomon says that much more important, you know, that, that they are to remember God in their mundane events of their everyday lives, and in light of what he has done for them, they are to remember what God has done. They are to remember what he's done, much like we are to remember what God has done for us. You know, and that's why I want to encourage you guys as much as I want to encourage myself to remember what God has done and what God has done for us. You know, mainly in the work and personal work of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, I know it can be hard to remember, you know, God in a sense of, you know, just every day. You know, the busyness of going to school, of, of working, of dealing with family and just all the stuff that comes with that. And it can sometimes be really hard, but, you know... As much as Solomon was encouraging uh, his younger audience, I just want to encourage us as well to remember God, to remember what He's done, you know, to remember Jesus Christ and the salvation, you know, that we have received from Him if we're believers, and and uh, and just the life that we have, you know, and the fact that God created us, you know, God has given us, you know, God sustains the world, He created the world as well, you know, you know, God has done so much for us, and I just pray that and hope that we can remember that, remember Him as well. You know, and then going into the rest of this passage in verses 9 through 14, Solomon, uh, I believe Solomon goes into what is the most important thing for his uh, his uh, audience to understand, is the uh, most important thing to remember for this life. He says in verse 13, The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So he is saying to fear God and to keep his commandments. So to... To fear God here does not necessarily mean to you know to be scared of God, to because He can do whatever you know, and He can do whatever He wants you know. But this is more in the sense of worshiping God, of reverence of God, you know, of a of a holy uh, fear you know of God, and uh, and this is important because it's going back to the beginning of this chapter. Where remember God, you know, and just to fear God in light of what He has done, you know. But even before this verse, you know, I think it's important to go back to verse twelve, just for those of us who are in school. So going back to verse twelve, you know, it says. My son, beware of anything beyond these. Of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Uh, I know that sometimes when we study and read many books, you know, on the Bible and, and listen to many great teachers and preachers that we may have knowledge and and it may seem like we had no more than everybody else or than other Christians. And it can be very hard and an easy temptation to act like we know more. And uh, I know just for those of us who were in school, you know, that uh, I just want to encourage us to not, you know, fall into that temptation. I know for myself sometimes it's hard, and uh, 
uh, and I'm not saying, you know, for those of us, because I, I believe, you know, most of us are called to ministry in some way or another, you know, and uh, uh, we do need to study. We do need to study, you know, the Bible, study books, read books, and and listen to great teachers, and, and uh, but it shouldn't end with the studying, you know. The studying should lead us to fear God and to keep His commandments, you know, and that is what's important. You know, if we just study for the sake of studying, then we've lost it. We've lost what's important. And, you know, I just want to encourage us, we go on in ministry, as we go on, you know, with our education after CBU, uh, those of us that are doing that, and just uh, I want to encourage, you know, I want to encourage all of us just to just uh, remember that, to remember that, you know, it can be very easy to be prideful in our knowledge, but just to remember that with our knowledge, you know, it should lead us to worship God. It should lead us to worship God and to obey Him. You know, it shouldn't lead us to act like we know more than everybody else. So going then back to verse 13, you know, to fear God uh, and to keep his commands. You know, it's a, uh, I think it's, I think it's very, very important that this is tied, this whole chapter is tied together and just that it isn't just fear God and keep his commandments. You know, it's fearing God and keeping his commandments in light of what has already been written in this chapter to remember also your creator, to remember your creator from verse one. You know, a lot of times when, when people think of the Old Testament, they think it's just, you know, all about obedience. You know, that it's all about, you know, um, it's all about just obeying God for the sake of obeying God. You know, but it's not. You know, even, you know, God gave the law after he delivered his people from from uh, slavery. After the Exodus is when God gave his law to Moses. And it wasn't before, it was after. You know, and uh, uh, after God delivered, then he gives them... So it's like even in this chapter, you know, after, after, uh, after God, after He says, "Remember your Creator," He says, "Then fear God and keep His commandments." You know, it's tied together, and I think that's important. You know, because you can't just say obey. You know, it always needs to be reminded of what God has done. You know, always needs to be reminded of that. You can't lose sight of what's important. You know, you know, it, without the gospel, without what God has done, then we lose what's important. We lose why we are to obey. We lose. Uh, the reason. So I think it's important to know that even in the Old Testament, the gospel is present. Even in the Old Testament, the the call to obey God because of what He has done is there. You know, it's not just left to the New Testament where grace is in the New Testament and it's not in the Old and just wrath is in the Old or just whatever it is that people believe about the Old Testament that God's grace is in the Old Testament as well. You know, and um, God's love for His people, and uh, and that is apparent if you if you read it. Um, so going into this, uh, also Solomon is also attributed for writing Proverbs, and in Proverbs 9.10 it says, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. So he's saying here that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So being wise at all, you know, and that's what Solomon wants to do. You know, it says in, uh, in 1 Kings 4.10 that Solomon is the wisest of the East. Yeah, wisest in all of Egypt. You know, Solomon was was very wise. You know, and uh, he he seeked to live a very wise life, to live in the wisest way, and um, and he's saying here in Proverbs that you know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know, and I mean that's probably something that he learned way down the road. It wasn't something he learned right away, and um, uh, that's also important to remember. Then it's also important to remember for those of us that are Christians that Christ that Christ is our wisdom. So, as we look at, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, it says something, it says that in Matthew 12, uh, 42, the queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. Jesus is saying here that something greater than Solomon is here, and that is meaning him. He is greater than that he is in fact our wisdom and in and in first corinthians paul says in a couple places that christ is our wisdom that christ is our wisdom and uh and that is huge you know for those of us that that are christians that christ is our wisdom that christ is the one that makes us wise to salvation that christ is uh the one you know and uh it's not that and we can't just obey god just to obey god you know it's it's remembering what god has done for us in christ it's remembering that the fear of the Lord, you know, to worship God. And we worship God in light of what Christ has done, in light of what God has done for us in the person and work of Christ. And that is why how we can fear the Lord and obey all of his commands. You know, and 
and also going into verse 14 of Ecclesiastes, you know, it, it says, For God will bring every deed in judgment, every serious thing, whether good or evil. And so it's also because God is our judge that we should obey him. So God is our judge, but it's also because of what he has done for us in Christ that we should obey him, you know, and um and I and I think that uh and I think that's how we should look at this. You know, it's not just to fear God and keep his commandments, you know, just to take that verse and just to look at it, you know, and maybe just put it somewhere where you can see it. That's the whole duty of man. But it's to remember that we fear God in light of what he's done, you know, in light. You know, if you look at first John uh three three twenty four, it says, Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. So he's saying here that whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. So that per, that that part makes you know says that and then it says by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. So God gives us his spirit in order to even to obey him. So without without God we can't even obey him. Without Christ we can't even obey God. So he makes it possible to obey God. We can't obey God apart from apart from Christ. So uh that's why it's important to remember, you know, Christ's death on the cross. You know, like we can't just make ourselves right before God. We can't just become uh, perfect people. You know, it's it's remembering what Christ has done. You know, and not looking at these commands uh, just as commands, but looking at this in light of the whole Scripture. You know, remembering what Christ has done on the cross, and remembering that uh, that is how we are to obey Him. You know, never disconnect obedience from what Christ has done. That is the most important thing, and I hope that we can always remember that.